said T Trap, Tiana T. Yeah, that's me, and I'm here with a discussion. So, I want to talk about why you shouldn't wear orange calcites in bed with you, on you, under your pillow, anywhere near you when you're going to bed. So, I talk about it on TikTok, and I made a quick little 60 second video, like kind of expound on the topic, but I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I get to go deeper into detail. I'm glad I get to be myself. I get to be all long and drawn now, all detail, all nitpicky, just the way I am, you know, earth sign things. But anyway, I'm gonna dive deeper into this topic and why you shouldn't do it. I'm gonna give you every single thing. I'm gonna give you every single little detail. I'm gonna give you all the tea, why you shouldn't do it. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So first and foremost, what is orange calcite? Orange calcite is an energy crystal. Energy crystals are crystals that give you energy. They give you motivation, they give you confidence, they give you ambition. They give you energy you need if you're depressed, you got anxiety, you're in a low vibrational state. They give you everything you need to get up and get out of that. They give you a kick in your butt. It's a creative energy crystal. So if you're lacking ideas, you're lacking, again, motivation, you're lacking direction, you don't know where you want to go, you don't know what you want to do, you just need ideas, this is a crystal that makes you a conduit of ideas. Everywhere you go, everything you think, and every like motion that you make in your daily life, you're just going to be like a channel of energy, a channel of ideas. That's what they mean by creative energy. It's a sexual energy crystal. So what does that mean? That means like it's going to give you motivation to be confident, be sexy. You're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, damn, I'm fine. Damn, I feel good. And that trickles into your workplace. It trickles into your daily life. You're going to be like, wow, I feel way more confident to get this task done. I feel like I'm the person for the job. I feel like I'm more fit for the role. You feel way more in your body and you feel like way more sexy doing it. Sexy people are confident, right? Sexy people, they can go out to the bar and mingle. They mix and mingle with anybody. They can talk to anybody. They can talk about anything. They're confident in themselves. They're most importantly, confident in their body. And when you're confident in your body, you're confident to do anything. You feel like you can't, you feel like there's nothing that I can't do. You feel like there's no one I can't have. And if you do face rejection, rejection doesn't hurt because you're so full of yourself. You're so full of like, damn, I got so much to offer. Damn, I look so good. Like that little rejection don't hurt. Also, it doesn't matter because you'll be like, oh, it's other fish in the sea. Who cares about that one? It's like 10 people in here. One of them gonna want me. Like, that's how much confidence it gives you. And that's what sexual energy is. Also about sexual energy, others feel it too. They feel that confidence. They feel that sexual energy. They feel how much power you're holding right now, how much power you're harnessing right now. It's also a crystal that repels negativity and laziness. Like, you will not feel lazy. Like, everything that you want to get done, you'll have the motivation to go do it. You gotta clean your house. You'll want to clean your house from top to bottom, you won't have like no fret about it. You're like, eh, ain't no nothing, I need to clean up. I wanna clean up. Negativity, once again, it gives you confidence. How can you be in a negative low state if you're so confident, if you have so much confidence in the universe, so much confidence in the world, so much confidence in yourself? Like, how can you be lazy? How can you be unmotivated? How can you be depressed? How can you be in a low state? You can't, you're like, man, fuck that. Everything's gonna work out. Like this crystal, like if, even if you don't know where you're going and what direction you're gonna go, you're gonna have the confidence to think like no matter where I go or where I end up, it's where I'm supposed to be. I'm okay with it, I'm okay with the unknown. Like that's literally how it makes you feel. It's also a sacral chakra crystal. So a sacral chakra talks about confidence. It talks about happiness, it talks about sexual healing, it talks about sexual energy. It talks about pleasure, it talks about creativity, it talks about all of that. Most of the sacral chakra energy is orange. Anything to do orange and vitality, this is sacral chakra energy. Like if you ever feel unbalanced, you feel out of energy, you feel unsexy, you feel just like non-confident, you feel like you just can't make up your mind, you can't decide what you wanna do, your sacral chakra might be out of balance. And that's why orange calcite and orange crystal will help that. Now let's talk about what orange calcite brings out of me. Because it's important, no matter like what the crystal says it does, it's important to know what it does for you and what it brings out of you. So what it brings out of me is sexiness, vitality, confidence, creativity. Like when I wear this crystal, I wear it to work. I wear it to work because I wanna feel confident at work. I have a hard time feeling confident at work and just being confident in my ideas, confident that I'm capable. Like this crystal repels all that. It says, I'm confident. It lets me know I'm confident. I feel confident. I feel like I have a golden ore around me. Like I'm a golden orb and like everywhere I go, I drop golden dust. I just be like, damn, I'm confident, I feel good. It helps me to radiate confidence. Like when I walk in the office, like I'm not looking down, I'm not looking around, I'm not like trying not to make eye contact with people. I look people dead in their eyes. I be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Like I don't have a problem with like looking you dead in your soul. I don't have a problem like speaking up of my ideas. Even if I might face rejection or I might be like, I don't know about that or I'm not sure. Like I don't have a problem with like saying, you know what? I think this might be it. And if I'm wrong, it's like, okay, cool. But at least I had the courage to say it. When I wear this crystal and I'm on my way to work and I'm listening to music, like it's songs. I hear songs on the radio and I can make a whole like scenario in my head of like me dancing to it, like a sexy dance. I don't know why and how, because I'm not a dancer. I'm an athlete, I'm into astrology. 
I'm an engineer, but I be in my car. I'll put a whole like routine together, a whole choreography together. I'd be like, damn, it's gonna hit. Damn, that's amazing. Like that's literally how that crystal is. It's like so much creativity. Like, and I'm talking about like people who've been dancing for years or choreographing for years. I'm talking about putting together stuff like that, like a whole scenario. I'm talking about top to bottom. I'm talking about like them videographing it. I'm talking about them putting words on it, the music's all the effects. I'm talking about I can do all that in one sitting, heading to work. That's what that crystal brings out of me. Also, I feel like who gonna reject me? Who gonna tell me no? Who gonna deny this right here? Who gonna tell me I'm not fine? You can't tell me I'm not fine. You can't tell me I'm not sexy because I'm looking in the mirror right now, I see a sexy bitch. I see a sexy woman. I see a woman that's capable. I see a woman that's powerful. I see a woman that's gonna be full of greatness. Like who gonna tell me no? And if they tell me no, I just be like, oh, they sleep. It's their problem. Like they love vibration anyway. Then I wanna fuck with them anyway. That's literally how I feel. And you want a crystal like that because again, you need to be confident. Why wouldn't you be confident in yourself? If anybody should be confident in yourself, it should be you, right? Exactly. That crystal brings everything up out of me. Once again, when I said sexual energy, not only do I feel sexy and I feel undeniable, like I really do be thinking about sex a lot. Like I'll be during the day, I'll be like, damn, I know I look good. Like if I've been over, I'll be like, damn, I look good. Damn, that ass is sitting today. Damn, that shit look good being over. Like my brain be like so tainted. Not, it's not always a bad way because again, I can handle that. My chart, like my natal chart is highly sexual. I can handle that. I'm used to like, you know, dirty thoughts, you know, parading my mind, but it brings that out of me. But again, when you're choosing crystals, look to see what it brings about of you. Cause I can give the same crystal to somebody else. She might not be thinking about sex cause she's not a sexual person. She might be thinking like, dang, I done made all these ideas for my business. I done made all these ideas for work. I done made all these ideas to like, you know, clean up around the house and just do more around the house and more in the community. That might bring that out of her, but for me, that bought sexual energy about me, like times three. So let's talk about sexual crystals in general. So what I call sexual crystals might not be what somebody else calls sexual crystals. So personally, I think all sacral and solar plexus crystals are sexual crystals. And those have to deal with energy, vitality, creativity, um, sexuality, pleasure, confidence. All crystals that kind of give you a sense of purpose and just like more to life, it gives you like more bang for your buck out of life. Those are sexual crystals to me. Also, some sexual crystals to me are love crystals. I'm gonna get into that next, but like crystals that bring up pleasure, that bring like warm, fuzzy feelings out of you, that make you be like, dang, I just wanna hug them, I just wanna be sensual, I just wanna be like, you know, touching somebody. Those are sexual crystals to me. And to others, again, that could bring like, oh, I just wanna do more for the community. I just wanna like, you know, make a bake sale. Warm, lovey feelings also could bring sexual energy out of you if you have a sexually charged heart. Now, the first sexual crystal in my opinion is orange calcite. Orange calcite is orange, vitality, creativity, all that, and it's right here on the screen. The next crystal is calcite. Orange calcite is in the family of calcite, but calcite in general is an energy crystal. It's a confidence crystal. It's a, I need to get my mind clear crystal. And that's a sexual crystal to me because it could bring out confidence. Anything that brings my confidence is sexual energy. It brings out creativity, sexual energy. Red Jasper. Now I know I said orange crystals and yellow crystals, but red crystals too. Now this red jasper brings out sexual energy. Another crystal that brings out sexual energy is red garnet. Red garnet is beautiful. Red garnet brings out passion. It brings out, you know, love. It brings out like, you know, them like dark and like deep sensual feelings. Another sexual crystal. Another crystal that brings out sexual energy is rhodonite. Now I know I rave about rhodonite. I say it's like a very lovey crystal, but it's like a a very sensual crystal too, because again, I feel warm and fuzzy. I feel like I just wanna lay it with somebody. I feel like I just wanna kiss somebody. I just wanna to touch somebody. That is a sexual crystal to me. The last crystal, which everybody would probably agree that this is a sexual crystal, is crocolite. It's hard for me to say that one, to be honest with you, but crocolite. Literally, if you read the description, it talks about sexuality, it talks about pleasure, it talks about romance, it talks about like just getting back into your body, it talks about fertility. This is a, a sexual crystal times three. Now another crystal that people might say is sexual, they'll say tiger's eye is, but personally, tiger's eye does not bring sexual energy out of me. It just brings like a, a soft, warm, like confidence, like a, hey, everything's gonna be okay. Even if it's not, just calm down. It don't bring out that like fire, like these other crystals do. But anyway, once again, like I told you, explore the crystal for yourself, see how it makes you feel, see what it brings about of you, because again, your chart, might be more sexually charged than theirs. Most importantly with spirituality anyway, get your own opinion. Don't ask other people, like get some insight, but don't don't take their word for it 100%. See what it brings about you and decide how it makes you feel. That's how spirituality works. Cause what they do might not be what you do. 
what works for them might not work for you. What they experience might not be your experience. So get your own opinion. Now, I don't talk about sexually charged charts. I don't talk about sexual energy. I don't talk about sexual placements and how I got a whole lot of them. So what are sexual placements in the natal chart? So there are sexual signs and there's sexual signs in like each little placement, but it's also sexual aspects. But to keep it simple today, we're only talking about the sexual signs and like a few placements such as Mars, Venus and all that. We're gonna keep it simple. We can get deep later on, but we, we starting new. We starting fresh. We get to know each other, right? Let's start simple. So the first one for me is Aries. If you got Aries specifically in the moon, Mars, Venus, or rising, you have a sexually charged chart. You ooze sex. You reek of sex. And it's not even something that you got to do. Like when people meet you and they feel your energy, they just want to tear your clothes off. You bring that, that nastiness out of them. You bring that like animal out of people. You don't have to do nothing. You can look and say it's all get out, but like they want to rip your clothes off. You just have that bad bitch energy. You just have that sexy energy. You have that zaddy energy. You have that, I will ruin your life. You have power. You ooze power. You ooze, you can't control me. And people love that. You ooze sex. Now, it can be for some airy suns, but specifically the moons, like you make people want to rip their clothes off. You make people want to rip your clothes off specifically. You just do. Like, you just, you just give that bad bitch that I will ruin your life, that bad girl energy. And you know who has an Aries moon and who's, who reeks of sex? She has strong sex appeal. Rihanna. She's a Pisces sun. She's supposed to be all innocent, supposed to be all cute and everything. Well, she is, but she oozes sex. She carries that shit so well. She's an Aries moon. She's the strongest example I can give to you about sexual energy, that Aries energy. Also, a close contender is Amber Rose. She's also an Aries moon. She oozes sex too. You just reek of sex. Nothing you can do about it. You reek of it. The next placement I want to talk about is Sagittarius. You also reek of sex. You reek of like, oh my God, you're a rebel. You reek of like bad news. You reek of, you'll ruin my life. And a lot of people want that. They want you to ruin their lives. So specifically the moon, Mars, Venus, and Risings. You make people just do bad things. You have also have that Scorpio death stare. A lot of people don't talk about it, but Sagittarius is, when they are in the mood and they're trying to turn you on, they can give you that look. They give you that one look and your whole soul be on fire. You're like, oh my God, like you feel weak. You feel like whatever they're gonna do to you, just let, just let them do it. Like you feel like you wanna to submit to them. Sagittarius got that energy. They also got that vibe. Like Sagittarius getting their rebels. They're confident. Sagittarius are very confident. They're very charismatic. They give you all that. Like you wanna rip their clothes off. You wanna be in their presence. Like you, you might know they got a girlfriend. You might know they got a woman. You might know they got a boyfriend. But like they, they just make you feel like, dang, they're gonna be a good time. They're gonna be a fun time. And I want that. I want my life ruined. Sagittarius. The other placement, of course, you already know, Scorpio. But Scorpio moon, Mars, Venus, and rising. Like literally, Venus especially. Like you know you reek of energy. Like you know you reek of sexual energy. You know you're sexy. You know like you bring that out of people. Like you don't do nothing. Just like all these other signs, you don't have to do nothing. You walk into the room, you're mysterious. You're dark, but also you seem light. You have so much mystery to people that they just wanna dive deeper. They wanna like get to see what's behind your eyes. Also, you know you got them sexy eyes. You know you have deep eyes. You know you can stare into people's souls. I'm a Scorpio Venus and I'm also a Scorpio Rising. I know my looks can be powerful. Like when I'm on an orange cow site, if I'm very confident, very in my energy, very in my powerful energy, I know look people in their eyes makes them feel naked. It makes them feel vulnerable. It makes them feel like, oh my God, like who is she? Like why she have that much power? You ooze sex, you ooze power. People want that. People be like, what the fuck? It makes a lot of people run, but also makes a lot of people be like, you know what, I want to tame that. I want to I wanna bring you out of that. I want to make you like less dark. You bring things out of people that you don't even expect to. All you did was exist. All you did was show up to the house today. All you did was show up to the room, show up to work today. And people are like, she looks kind of cute. Or he look kind of fine. Like he, he looks like bad news again. It's all about that bad news energy, that dark energy. Like you just ooze that. You can't help that. Also, you know you got them deaf eyes. You know if you just stare at somebody, you don't have to do nothing. You just simply stare like this. They are weak in their knees. That's sexual energy. Own that shit. Another sign that sexual energy is Taurus. A lot of people don't talk about it, but Taurus is moon, Mars, Venus, and rising. They also bring out sexual energy. And it's not even a sense of like they wear on the shoulders, but like they're beautiful. They're sexy. You know when somebody has Taurus placements because like they have like something sexy about them. And also they're very sensual people. They're ruled by Venus once again, they're sensual people, but like they're sexy in the fact that they always got something about their body that makes people like just like fall to their knees. Like they always probably got a little bit more booty, 
living with more breasts, more hips, more thighs. They got something more of somebody else and they got, probably also got good skin. They have something about them that makes people be like, damn, she look good, damn, she's fine. So a good example of that is, uh, I believe it's Malia Obama, the brown one. Like she has a lot of people like, damn, she beautiful, damn, she fine. She got her mama hips, like she don't be doing nothing. That's that tourist in her, like she just beauty, she's beautiful. She got hips, people like legs. Like, she got that little something about her that makes people like, damn, I want more of that. That's what it is about Taurus too. Taurus has that energy, that sexual energy that makes people like, you know, cringe, make people be like, damn, I just wanna submit. Or damn, I just want a piece of that. I just wanna like be in their presence. Sexual energy. So those are my top four and those are like my final four. A lot of people will say Libra should be part of the equation. Personally, I don't count Libra because when I talk about sexual energy and it being strong, it's about what you protrude out to others. And basically, it's like that strong energy that people just want to like, you know, tackle. They want to rip clothes off. Libras don't do that to people. Libras are sweet. Libras look beautiful. They look innocent. They look like wives. They look like husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends. They don't look like, damn, I just want to fuck her. I just want to like tear her soul. I just want to just, ugh. They don't, they don't make people want to like do things like animals behave like animals, they don't do that. It's just like, damn, I admire your beauty. I admire the way you talk. So when I talk about sexual energy, Libras are the lusty ones. They're not the lusted after, they're just lusty. So that's why I don't kind of include them, but you know, depending on other placements in your chart, like again, you could be a Libra sun with Aries moon, like Amber Rose, like I said, or just other people with Aries moons, but um, yeah. Libras don't bring this, I'm sorry, Libras don't bring the sexy out. Libras don't bring the ammo out of people. Like personally, every time I meet a Libra, my energy is stronger than theirs. I go, oh, he cute, he cool. Oh, they're so adorable. Like it don't make me want to be like, oh my gosh, like whatever you want to do to me, whatever she want to do to me, I'm gonna let them do it. Like they don't do that for me. And I haven't seen them do that in other people either. You have to get to know them. You have to let them put their charm on you. Aries, Taurus, Sagittarius, and Scorpio. You don't have to put charm on nobody. They are already charmed in your presence, just in your energy field. Like you just, you just gotta exist. Libra gotta try, in my opinion. So why shouldn't you sleep with orange calcite or any sexual crystal for that matter? You shouldn't do it because energy is not created nor destroyed. If I give off something, somebody has to receive it. So if I'm giving off sexual energy, whether I'm asleep or not, because again, if you got strong sexual placements in your chart, you already oozing sex. You already oozing that energy that people just want to like receive and they just want to do nasty things. They just want to bring out the animal in them once again. If you already ooze that, when you go to sleep and you sleep with a crystal like that, you still have that aura, that energetic field around you that's very sexual, that's protruding sex, that's saying, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm sexy, I'm horny, like come, come see me, come be my presence. Even though you're not asking for it, that's your energy, that's your aura, that's like your whole little like energetic field. So if you're going to bed like that, with a sexual crystal, who comes calling is incubus and succubus. So an incubus is a male form of a sex demon. And sex demons prey on people that they can have sex with and get energy from. Because if they have sex with you, your astral body, by the way, not your physical body. Your astral body, if they have sex with your astral body, you're giving them energy. Especially if you orgasm, like they eating that shit up. It keeps them alive. It keeps them prospering. It keeps them getting stronger. Now, succubus is the female version of that. So like of a male, if you're giving off strong sexual energy, you're going to bed with a sexual crystal that's increasing that sexual energy, you're telling her like, hey, I want it. And they are going towards energy. And the astral realm is all about energy. They seeing that, they, it's, it's nighttime. They're preying on people on who they can like talk to. They're preying on people who they can attach themselves to, who they can have sex with, who they can lay up with. So if you're giving off that, that signal, because it's like a horn, it's like a little field. If you give up that signal, they're gonna come calling because if you give up a strong signal, they want the strongest sexual person. You have energy that's gonna keep them alive and they want that, they want all that. They wanna feel good, they wanna keep feeling low and nasty, they wanna feel strong and powerful and even more sexual. Because you are strong and giving up strong energy, they can attach themselves to you. Like say you have one and you don't even know anything about this and you let them, and you let them attach themselves to you, they can start becoming drivers in your life. So you might be like, dang, I'm hella horny now. And you're hornier than you've ever been in your life. Like you just get peaks of horniness. That happened to me. You get peaks of horniness. And now since they attach themselves to you, you horny as hell. So anybody you see, you just wanna fuck. Or anybody that you're like dealing with, like you just gonna wanna have sex more. That sex demon is eating it up too. He's a part of you. She's attached to you. 
So when you're having sex, they're having sex and they're getting stronger. They can start like, you know, seeking out other people for you. You're in a low vibrational state, but they're in a high state. So now as you're walking and going like towards your life, you'll be like, dang, that man kind of broke. That man ain't got nothing going on. That man's low vibrational and you want him and you're having sex with him. And that incubus is draining you through him, but that incubus is having sex with them. It's telling you like, oh yeah, you like that person. You can deal with that person. I don't go to bed with that because I don't need that attached to me. I don't want my energy drained. I don't want it driving my life and making me have sex with people I just wouldn't have sex with. I don't want to just be having reckless sex or soulless sex. Sex with people who don't matter. An incubus or a succubus can attach to you and start making you have meaningless sex and you keep having meaningless sex and creating soul ties. It happens. That's why I say don't go to bed with sexual crystals. I also say don't go to bed horny because if you go to bed horny, again, you're giving off a signal. Your body is sexually deprived. Again, you might not be saying that or you might not say that to nobody else, but your astral body, it speaks in energy. If you're giving off energy like, damn, I'm sexually deprived, an incubus and a succubus, they hear that, they feel that, they sense that, they can see that, because you know auras. They can see that and they're like, oh, this person's weak right now. This person's susceptible to like, you know, being pleasured. They can use some pleasure and they come give you that. And then also as you're getting pleasure, you're like, damn, this feels good. Now you form an attachment with that thing. Now it thinks it can stay. Now it thinks it can do things in your life. And also, if you try to get stronger too, like you try to be like, you know, I'm tired of being sad, I'm tired of being low, or I'm tired of like having sex with people I just don't care about, it's gonna get mad. That's when you start getting energetically drained because you're its source. Now it starts to manipulate you. It starts to like whisper things in your ear. You're just home at night. You're just chilling. And then all of a sudden you start getting negative thoughts. Be like, damn, I'm not good enough. Or like, dang, why did I mess with that man? Like, he was kind of horrible. Why did I mess with that woman? Like, she didn't have nothing going for herself. And I sat there and let them, like, have a piece of my body. And the incubus is literally whispering things to you at that time. They're saying, you're not good enough. You let men do things to you that, you know, that they shouldn't do. You're not worth nothing. You'll start feeling worthless. You'll start having so many self-doubts. You're like, where'd that come from? It can be coming from an incubus or a succubus because you sat there and went to bed horny. You sat there and went to bed with sexual frustration. You sat there and had a sexual crystal that brings out sexual energy and gave off that signal to attract that in your life. You attract something so low that it's making you low. It'll do that. I say don't go to bed with sexual crystals for that reason. Also, you just wanna keep yourself in a high state because how this realm works is it goes from your subconscious to your conscious. So in your subconscious mind, if you're feeding it and it's like basically getting infected by something that low, something low, something feeding you negativity, something feeding you doubt, it starts there. Then in your real life, you start to doubt yourself. You wanna keep feeding yourself with positivity, happiness, protection. Don't go to bed with sexual crystals. If you need insight, if you need motivation, if you need ideas in your dream state, you go to bed with amethyst. Amethyst is a creativity crystal too. It's a seeing crystal, it's a third eye crystal. It's a crystal that helps you with insight and dreams too. But it's like a, a calming, a more rounded creativity crystal. Like basically you're in a dream state, it's like a calm, it's like, dang, I'm, I'm peaceful, I'm having a good time. Oh, my dream gave me this idea. It's peaceful, it's protective. When I wear the orange calcite, I feel like a flame. I don't know if y'all ever played Mario Party like back in the day, back in the old school days and they had this one game like when you play jump rope, and it's like flames. Every time like somebody gets hit with a flame, one flame leaves or whatever. I feel like a flame, a big old ball of flame. I'm like, yes, go, go, go. I got ideas. I wanna go here, I wanna bounce around, I wanna do this. I'm a flame. With amethyst, I'm cool, calm, collected. I'm in my body. I'm like, yeah, that's a good download. That's a good idea, let me write that down. On orange calcite, I'm a, oh, 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 I got a good idea. I gotta do that one. And I gotta do this one. I don't know where to start. I should start there. I should do this. I should do everything. I should do everything at once. That's orange calcite versus amethyst. So if you go to bed with anything for some creativity, amethyst, not orange calcite, not calcite, not any of the sexual crystals that I just told you about, especially if your chart is like highly sexual. And once again, your chart does not have to be highly sexual. Remember, aspects come into play. We're not talking about that today, but certain aspects are super sexual and sensual too. So just don't go to bed sexually frustrated. Because essentially what you're doing when you go to bed with a sexual crystal is telling all the low vibrational sex demons that I'm available. I want my ass ate. I want my booty rubbed. I want you to come and like, you know, pleasure me. 
So if you have sex dreams and you're getting pleasure, and I'm talking about it's orgasmic, I'm talking about it's otherworldly. I'm talking about like, you like, that's the best shit I ever had in my life. Sex demon, don't want it. Don't go to bed with sexual crystals. Now let's talk about how I found this out and why I had the need to come tell you guys on TikTok. I told you guys on TikTok because I went to bed with a sexual crystal. Now I done put in a whole lot of work to get rid of um, the incubuses, cause I had three. I had three mess with me because I had it for so long. I didn't know I was being infiltrated with those because again, I was new to spirituality. I didn't really know what was going on. Like again, if you're gonna dive into this, be responsible. That's what I'm trying to teach you. I'm trying to teach you how to be responsible. But let me tell you what happened to me when I went to bed with orange calcite. First of all, energy. I had hella energy. Like, I'm talking about I was in my dream bouncing around, I was having a good time. But again, that crystal brings out sexual energy. So I was strongly in my sexual energy and my creative energy too. I was just like, oh, you look good. You look cute. I look fine. We should talk. Like, let's, let's go ahead and like go on a date. Like that's kind of the energy I was in. So what happened was I was getting on the bus. I don't know why I was going on the bus, but I was getting on the bus with one of my old friends from high school. So I was getting on the bus and then it's like we were going somewhere. Who I ran into? was an old dude I talked to who was hella low vibrational. He was like one of the lowest vibrational people I ever talked to and he didn't even know it because he knew nothing about energy. He knew nothing about spirituality. He knew nothing about a lot of things, but he was back in my dream. He also was back in my dream too because he's been trying to reach out to me and he's been showing up in my dream space because he blocked in real life. Anyway, I seen him and because I was so like high off that crystal, I was just like bouncing around and I was just like so excited. I was like, oh my goodness, he's here. But again, I was in my sexual energy. I was like, I know I look good. I know I look fine. And literally in my dream, that's all it was. Like he knew I was fine. He was trying to get back in my good graces. And then he had a friend. It's like they kept trying to like, you know, go back and forth with me. Like who gets to sit next to me? Who gets to be my energy? You know, me being confident, being high off that crystal. I'm like, yeah, I'm a hot commodity. Of course I deserve to be far over. Like I was sitting there eating that shit up, like just craziness. And then next thing I know, I'm back into my apartment, which wasn't really my apartment because you know, dream space, everything looks a little bit different. I'm in my apartment, we're in the water, like it's a tub getting filled up with water. But then um, he comes in and mind you, I didn't want to talk to him because he didn't have a lot going on for himself. But in the stream, I embraced him. I see him and I was just like, you know what? I had sex with him before, so like, why not? So I see him, I kissed him. And I actually wanted to be in his presence because again, I had so much energy, so much sexual energy on me. I just wanted to give love. I just wanted to receive love. I just wanted to like, just be in the mix. So I see him and I kissed him and I was like, oh yeah, like just happy. Like just so much happiness. Cause again, I'm a flame. I'm happy go lucky. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go do this. Let's go explore everything. I was like, yeah, we can do this. Cause he got a job now. When I was talking to him, he didn't have a job. So I was like, we can go here. We can do this. We can do all these things. Like I was so in my sexual energy. And I was just like, yeah, just, let's just go, go, go. So I kissed him. And then I remember somehow we got to like laying down. Like, I don't know, it's like my dream again. I was a flame, so everything was just happening so fast. I remember I was laying down and we were naked. I don't remember how we got naked. I remember the penis and it was about to go inside me and I was like kind of scooting back so it can go inside me. And the thing, cause it was the incubus. It was the incubus portraying somebody that I knew. The incubus is like, I'm not doing nothing. It was me putting it in. He's like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not even thrusting, I'm not even doing nothing. And then he was doing that because I put in so much work, I put in so much effort to say, stay away from me. I was confronting him in the dream space. I was beating him up. I was literally saying, don't touch me. I don't want to bother by y'all no more. I'm sick of y'all. That's kind of how it was. So I know my spirit guides are there. I know it's my spirit guides mainly because they come in twos. It's always like a male or female, never in the same body, but it's, it's twos. So I remember, I'm pretty sure it was them because I remember I had a previous dream to where it was an incubus near me and I wasn't as strong, I wasn't as lucid at the time. And then one of them said, go away. Or saying, no, 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 don't touch her. So I know they were, I know they be protecting me in my dreams. But I remember it was somebody standing there and the ink was like, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not putting it in there. I ain't even doing nothing. And then I remember catching on to that and I woke up. So that's why I came to y'all to say, don't go to bed with sexual crystals. Somebody's receiving it. They're always around. It's not like you can just like not go wear a sexual crystal and like they just won't be there. They'll be vanished. Like they just know when the signal's on and when the signal's off. When they can like have more chance of like getting to you and touching on you and when they don't. And when you don't go to bed horny or with sexual frustration, you also don't go to bed with the light on saying, hey, I'm available. That's all. I just want to come like let y'all know that because again, when you learn about spirituality, it's so much that you're subject to, especially when the veil is low. 
Also, if you're new to spirituality, pay attention to that too because you have more of a chance of getting messed with with an incubus or a succubus because they're always around, once again. They're always around, but they can only see you when you're getting off a strong energy like that or when you're in a low state to where you don't have any like, you know, protection of. You don't have any blinders saying, hey, stay away. You don't have no signal saying stay away. So when the veil is low, you have more of a susceptible time to be infiltrated by those. That's all. I'm just looking out for y'all. I'm letting y'all know. So look, again, spirituality is nothing to play with. It might be better than Christianity. It might be better than any religion that you were just in. You might feel more freer, but also you are more responsible. You have to be way more responsible of your energy, the energy that you're giving off, and the energy that you receive. Way more conscious, way more responsible. So like, dive into this, but again, always have protection, always. And that's all, that's it. So again, that's the end of all of this. I hope you found this informative. I'll be transitioning my page to a spiritual page because this is always what I want to do. I was doing reaction videos to kind of get my subscribers up because you know, I just want to hit the 1K so I can get monetized and then start doing what I want to do, which is this. So if you're here from TikTok and you're just coming to get information, cool. I hope you found it informative. You know, subscribe if you want to, but no pressure. If you just want to dip in and dip out and get information and then go as you please, go ahead. There's no pressure to subscribe. Do what you want to do. And you know, I'll see y'all next video.